Welcome to Iron Paulsboro, a new program this week coming to you from the administration building here on site at the new Paulsboro Marine Terminal for an update. I'm very pleased that the acting executive director of the Gloucester County Improvement Authority, George Strachan, will join us to give uh, you, the viewer, the latest as where we are because real progress is happening as we drive towards getting the facility open. And Irma, we're going to have a few guests and we're not sure of the length of the show, so we don't know who's going to make it. We never really do, John, but somehow after 25 years, it still works. Well, that's because Fred's magic. Thank God for Fred. <laughs> Thank God for Fred is right. Uh, we'll be right back. Multi-policy discount. Paperless discount. Paid in full discount. Homeowners discount. Safe driver discount. Chipmunk family reunion. Someone stole the nuts. Squirrel jail. Justice. Countless discounts. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Thinking about a new appliance or an LCD TV? Don't think twice. Think Weiss. Weiss True Value has a full line of LCD TVs plus a great variety of appliances. And of course, hardware items like True Test Paints, Master Mechanic Tools, Electrical Supplies, Key Duplicating, and Rug Doctor Rentals. And for repairs on screens and windows, look no further. Weiss True Value, from making keys to selling appliances and LCD TVs. Don't think twice, think Weiss. 39 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. For everything, there's a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time for remembering, and a time for parting. When that time arrives, let Beth McBride Foley and Thomas D. Foley at the McBride Foley Funeral Home help you in your time of need. Offering a wide variety of funeral services from cremation to traditional, McBride Foley Funeral Home has been helping families with the loss of a loved one with over 50 years of combined service. McBride Foley Funeral Home, 228 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. And welcome back. As I mentioned at the top of the program, we're coming to you from the administration building here at the Paulsburg Marine Terminal. And this, of course, is the central point where construction is coordinated. And with me now is the acting executive director of the Gloucester County Improvement Authority, which is the agency responsible for building the terminal on behalf of the South, South Jersey Port Corporation. And for those who read the newspaper from time to time, I work for the Gloucester County Improvement Authority and happy to be associated with them and report to the executive director, acting director, acting director executive director who's with us. And George has been on the program before, and he is the person who uh, is leading this. So George, first of all, welcome. And uh, you know, it's late in the day, activity's quieted here, but there's real progress. Yep, pleasure to be here, thank you. I mean, it's gotta be uh, good for you to see the fruition without your leadership, without uh, Senate President Sweeney's leadership, without free older director's leadership, we wouldn't be where we are. We're moving uh, pretty far along. Um, the wharf is under construction. Some of your residents may have heard the uh, the pile driving. It's actually slowed down now. We're in a, we have a fish moratorium. Uh, that'll pick back up in July, and that's the sound of progress. And um, we have the we're out to bid right now for the on-site rail contract. That's going to happen over the summer. We're expecting bids back at the end of May. And um, there's activity on the Paulsboro packaging uh, site where they've they've done demolition and some cleanup there. The uh, Overpass has been uh, completed. The road, uh, Universal is closed, uh, except to construction and emergency traffic. So we, we appreciate the, the residents' uh, help with that one, too. Well, the overpass was a big deal to unlock the property. And when George talks about the pile driving, first of all, some viewing this will find it interesting that the health of the Delaware River, of course, continues to improve. So there is respect to the sturgeon population with regards to how they move, plus the shad. So there's a window where no activity, particularly sound, can occur that could be damaging to the fish. But George, the reason for that is this wharf had to be developed in a way it's almost elevated. I mean, it's like you're building another overpass. Give people a sense of how many piles are driven and what this thing's going to look like. Uh, pile supported deck. Once again, that was uh, directed by the regulatory agencies, so we minimized uh, disturbance in the river. Uh, fish can swim. Um, we're driving uh, close to 800, over 800 piles. Um, there's almost 400 in right now, and it's going to be carrying some monster loads. The um, uh, our, our partnership, the, the South Jersey Port Corporation, is going to operate the facility once it's open, and they've partnered with Holt Logistics to bring in tenants. There's a real tenant coming in um, that they've already signed up. They've got a couple others in the wings. Um, the the one tenant that's coming in is a uh, steel manufacturer. There's gonna they're going to bring bringing stab slabs of steel in over the wharf. It's going to be going out via rail, 
and it's going to be going out to the Midwest to be processed and, and turned into products and then, you know, redistributed from there. And, and that's why, by the way, the expense on this wharf, because originally you may recall some of the past shows, they talked about maybe filling in some of the river so they didn't have to build the elevated wharf, but uh, there was no other choice. And it, it's not uncomplicated. No, not at all. And, you know, it was dictated by the the DEP and the uh, the federal agencies. And obviously we're in compliance and we're in compliance with the, the moratorium issues. So we're, we're building. So as you said, we're not disturbing the, the migratory fish and the fish that are uh, protected. But, you know, doing that with a balance of creating jobs and commerce. Um, the other point, obviously, is that um, jobs are coming. Um, that we expect the uh, facility to be open in the first quarter of next year. Um, uh, Holt Logistics has expressed uh, a desire that there would be a uh, preferential treatment for hiring. They're looking at, you know, once this one tenant is up and running, they're looking at at least 250, 200 to 250 jobs. And um, we're working with them for some training programs through our WIB and um, obviously that would be of interest to you and your residents. Oh, very important. I mean, and, and it's, it's a promise that's going to be kept with regards to, you know, hiring preferences where appropriate. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't cover everything, but it'll certainly cover a portion of it. Also, you know, a very important part of this site, of course, was the ability to get the overpass in, so it links directly to Interstate 295 with no truck traffic through the town. But this rail's a big deal because carrying steel's a big deal. And there, there's a phase that we're in now, correct, George, with regards to the rail? Yeah, um, the uh, as I had mentioned earlier in the show, there's going to be on-site rail. The um, it's it's going to be developed for this particular tenant. They're going to be using um, rail almost exclusively to come off of the wharf to stack it to uh, send it out. There's uh, a, a lot of different components uh, attached to that that construction itself, but um, the uh, the the South Jersey Port Corporation as well as uh, the Improvement Authority are looking at um, making sure that rail service is expanded down here as well. So. It's, it's, it's just real important. And, you know, just thinking, you think through this, you know, we had the unfortunate occurrence with the swing, the old rail bridge. And I really wonder, and I'm not an authority on this, we just don't know if the old bridge, frankly, would have handled the weight that's going to be demanded. So with the new bridge facility coming in, that's got to complement what has to happen with the rail because this can't happen without modern rail. No, and it's very exciting. And, and the the other tenants that are, are on the uh, potentially on the docket, they're going to be able to access the bridge and the the construction that's going on now, obviously, is bypassing the community, and that's the, really important. And the cleanup on Paul's per packaging, George, it looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, we're, we're in negotiations with with Clorox to acquire the the site and make it part of the property. Um, they've been they've been good to work with as. BP has been a good partner all along. Um, you know, we, we continue to, to meet with BP as they do the remediation and, and we do the redevelopment piece. And um, it's been a really good partnership. And it has been. And uh, as, as the acting executive director mentioned, the hope is first quarter, not the hope, the contractual obligation is boats pulling into this place in the first quarter of 2016. And that's not that far off. Thank you, George, very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Life is a journey that we travel with a lot of uncertainty. When your family is faced with change and you're in need of understanding, direction, honesty, and professionalism, we at the Landoffy Funeral Home have a tradition of assisting you with all of your needs in any way that we can. We offer many affordable funeral services. Please feel free to call us with any questions you may have or visit us at www.landoffyfuneralhome.com. Rizzo Family Chiropractic Center in Gibstown offers pain relief with a difference. Using specific chiropractic adjustments, Rizzo Family Chiropractic will get to the root of your problem quickly. Bring your headaches, neck, back, joint, or limb pain to Dr. Karen Rizzo. If you have recurring pain, chiropractic can help. Rizzo Family Chiropractic can relieve many sources of pain without extended treatment and ongoing therapy. Give your family the gift of caring professional pain relief with a difference. Rizzo Family Chiropractic. Welcome back. With me now is Howard Henderson. He is the state director, is that the correct term? Correct. Correct, I got that right, of the United States Department of Agriculture. And Howard's not a stranger to the show, nor is he a stranger to Paulsburg, grew up in Woodbury, went to Woodbury High School, and uh, been an important person with projects all through this region, because you, you hear USDA and you all just think about agriculture, but their mission is far greater than that. And uh, 
Howard, uh, you know, without, without your agency and the attention you paid here with the new water filtration plant and particularly the new water tower, uh, this port would not be able to function because the infrastructure wouldn't have handled it. And he was in town today as we taped this, recognizing, what is today, Earth Day? Well, tomorrow is actually Earth Day, but today we, we uh, did an advance uh, Earth Day for Paulsboro today. Well, that's, a, that's, a, that's a real sign of optimism that there's going to be a tomorrow. That's, 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 that's correct. Good. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, thank you for being here. And I, would, I want to do the lead-in because, you know, without the participation of your agency, those projects don't happen. But tell us about the recognition of Earth Day and why it's important to the department. Great. Um, well, first off, it's great to be back in Paulsboro. It's, it is one of my favorite towns. I grew up in Woodbury, so uh, I have a dear fondness for Paulsboro, and my brother-in-law grew up in Paulsboro. So I, I love being back here. Uh, it, it, USDA, uh, uh, my particular agency, Rural Development, provides financial assistance to rural communities. And that can come in the form of infrastructure, such as what we've done here in Paulsboro with the water uh, tower and the water treatment facility. Uh, we also provide housing loans. We provide uh, opportunities for businesses. We provide loans for municipal buildings. So we have a wide array of financial assistance programs for uh, rural communities. Now, what we did today was, was a celebration of the uh, new water tower for Paulsboro. And what, why is that important is because it provides safe and adequate water supply for the town, not just for the residents, but also for the port project here today. And it's important. It's uh, along with the water tower and the, and the filtration plant, we're providing potable water and an adequate supply and adequate storage, which helps the firefighting capability as well. Uh, our friends in California are having significant water problems. Yeah. Yeah. Significant. Uh, we're fortunate enough that uh, the folks that uh, uh, think ahead and are, are futuristic have made, have made plans for Paulsboro, both from an environmental viewpoint and from uh, just a quality of water viewpoint. So we're very happy to be a part of this. Uh, Earth Day represents helping the environment, so we came here today to, to celebrate Earth Day and to celebrate the new water tower. Yeah, and, and it's, just, it's just good news at a time where, first of all, we need good news, and everyone needs good news. But these, as you look back on this stuff, these pieces are starting to come together. I mean, as taxpayers in town carrying the full load of doing the new water filtration plant, and we all know we recently had issues, they've gotten worked out because you work through problems. But the water tower, that uh, the new water tower replaced the water tower that had been there probably since, I think, the 30s, Howard. I mean, it didn't know anybody anything. Correct. I think it was uh, in the 1930s, and uh, we actually have an application on hand now to uh, do some renovations to the other water tower at the other end of town. So uh, I, I believe the total amount invested by uh, USDA and by USEDA is somewhere over $9 million, and, and, and more than half of that has been in the form of grants. We like the grant part a lot, by the oh, way. It yeah. makes it, it makes yeah. it really easy to understand. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the idea, of course, is to reduce the user cost uh, for the residents. So. Uh, we're very excited about our continuing commitment here. Don't forget the library. You see the great progress on the Gill Memorial Library. Originally, we had hoped that would be across the street. There were some archaeological issues, of all things, with Indian remnants. Uh, that's a whole other story. But it's to keep the project alive, Howard's office worked very close with the municipality, Dr. Quint, who quarterbacked it, the library board, uh, to be able to allow that money to stay in town. That's going to be a big deal. That, it is a big deal. Um, that was a $300,000 grant from USDA, along with the Library Association funding. It's a great, great example of, of public-private financing, uh, especially with the federal uh, involvement. Just a great example. Uh, some people think libraries are outdated and all that, and uh, most of us think otherwise. We think that there's a real need to have an on-site library system. I, I think it's critical as well. The kids enjoy it, the access to the internet, and of course, still the printed books. Absolutely, and it's, and that. Uh, that particular money was uh, uh, recovery bill money from several years ago where a lot of criticism was made about that money, the projects were never built. Well, we've got a great example right here in Paulsboro of how that money was used and how it's going to be very effective for generations to come. It is, it is a legacy project, and I can't thank Howard and his group enough because uh, there were, because of the issues with the original Paul House, there was a chance that money could get lost in the shuffle. He didn't let that happen. He, Steve Bresnan, your whole group, made certain that money stayed dedicated to where it was. 
And that's how the library got built along with that library board, the wonderful ladies uh, who put that whole thing together. Howard, thank you so much. And uh, you'll be back for the ribbon cutting at both the, uh, both the library and when the first ship docks here at the port. That'll be great. Yep, Th I look forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. Today is another milestone that our community has reached. If you have not noticed, this dedication shows how government can work together and do so productively. Today, we, Mayor and Council of Paulsboro, are very proud of our community and progress. As the Mayor said, there's, there's a lot of people to thank for this. Uh, and I do also want to start with uh, the U.S. Senators. Uh, their, their support has been just, just un, unwaverable. They, they've been behind us the whole time. And that's uh, Senator Booker and Senator Menendez. This whole project was driven from the town up. It was, it was what the town desperately needed. Uh, this is a 500,000 gallon water tank. The old tank sitting over here was 300,000. So what's happened by increasing the, capa the storage capacity, we've, we've improved service to the, to the uh, residents. We've improved uh, the firefighting capability. If there's any firefighters around, they know what that's all about. My son is a firefighter. He talks to me all the time about storage capacity. So the storage capacity is enormous, but it also supports the port project. Uh, the port project also needs infrastructure support, and, and this uh, new water tower provides that. I think as we, as we view these projects, Howard said it best, it is a matter of partnerships, and these partnerships are essential to getting the projects done that have been done. The federal EDA, US EDA, and the US Department of Commerce's grants are just under $10 million that have been received to date for two key, major, highly visible uh, infrastructure projects, this water tower and the treatment plant which is going to serve the neighborhood and serve the future development of that port. We do have another $2.2 million application in, which we are hopeful we will see that as another special event here uh, in the borough as well. Multi-policy discount. Paperless discount. Paid in full discount. Homeowner's discount. Safe driver discount. Chipmunk family reunion. Someone stole the nuts. Squirrel jail. Justice. Countless discounts. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Thinking about a new appliance or an LCD TV? Don't think twice, think Weiss. Weiss True Value has a full line of LCD TVs plus a great variety of appliances. And of course, hardware items like True Test Paints, Master Mechanic Tools, Electrical Supplies, Key Duplicating, and Rug Doctor Rentals. And for repairs on screens and windows, look no further. Weiss True Value, from making keys to selling appliances and LCD TVs. Don't think twice, think Weiss. 39 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. For everything, there's a season, and a time for everything under heaven. A time for sharing, a time for caring, a time for remembering, and a time for parting. When that time arrives, let Beth McBride Foley and Thomas D. Foley at the McBride Foley Funeral Home help you in your time of need. Offering a wide variety of funeral services from cremation to traditional, McBride Foley Funeral Home has been helping families with the loss of a loved one with over 50 years of combined service. McBride Foley Funeral Home, 228 West Broad Street, Paulsboro. And welcome back. We continue now with Mark Wilkes. He's with the Paulsbury Refining Company. We're very pleased he joins us today, and today there's good news from there. And again, uh, we like good news. But first of all, Mark, welcome. And uh, I really appreciate the fact that you as a group uh, got with the community for the, there was a town meeting on a Saturday. And uh, after that most recent uh, incident, uh, you guys stayed out in front of him and kept talking to people. That gives, that gives a sense of reassurance. So, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, and uh, we appreciate that. Now, you bring other news today. Yeah, absolutely, John. Um, again, uh, we love to take advantage of this venue. Um, I'm very happy to be here today under ver very different circumstances because we came to talk about jobs. Um, it seems to be a theme here in Paulsbury, and quite frankly, it's good news. Um, but we're, we're here today to talk about our process operator technology degree program. It's a two-year degree program at Salem Community College. It is the feeder system for those op well-paying operator jobs within the refinery. 
And, and when you say well-paying, I mean, you know, for those who are watching the show that are retired, you remember working at the refinery, wait to hear what the pay scale is at this point. Yeah, uh, John, right now, an operator trainee, that is that individual that comes in with that two-year degree, is walking in the door making over $29 an hour. That, that's not too bad. Now, Mark, so, what, so how does a person get involved? What, what is the message today? So the message today is that there are, the refinery has put up four, four, four full scholarships per year for students wishing to get into this program. Two of those scholarships are reserved for Paulsboro High seniors. So we want to get that word out that these opportunities are available and we want them to be taken advantage of because last year we had these same two available and unfortunately we only had one applicant. So that was money left on the table. We won't, don't want to see that you know, happen again. And what's the timetable on that? The time, the applications are available now. So we, we will be uh, part of that uh, selection process along with Salem Community College and uh, it follows the normal school year. So the uh, seniors will be looking to begin matriculating into that program again in September. Very good. So the message here is if you have a child at Paulsboro High School and uh, there's some discussion about what should happen. First of all, Salem County Community College is a really nice setting. And the fact that there is a two-year degree specializing in this kind of operator, it makes a lot of sense, Mark. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense um, for the community and for us. Uh, we do a good many things in the community, but quite frankly, I can't think of a better thing that we can do to make jobs available to keep the money uh, that's paid out to employees right here in Paulsburg and Gibbstown. I've always fascinated because, again, those old enough to remember, you know, there was a tradition that when you graduated Paulsburg High School, you either went to work at the refinery, you maybe went to work at DuPont, you drove a truck. I mean, that's what happened. Well, those times have changed. The last time there's been job announcements at the refinery, I remember there were like numbers of in excess of 500 applicants. Yeah, uh, we have become more specialized, but certainly when we put those notices out, we, we are inundated uh, with, with applicants. They are very good jobs. Very good. Thank you, Mark. Regards everybody to plan. Keep us safe, by the way. Absolutely. You had a good day today. Today was a good day. Good announcement. Good day. Stay with us. We're coming right back. And again, if you have a child in Paulsboro High School, uh, mention to them this opportunity. It's, uh, it's a, a good career path. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Life is a journey that we travel with a lot of uncertainty. When your family is faced with change and you're in need of understanding, direction, honesty, and professionalism, we at the Landoffy Funeral Home have a tradition of assisting you with all of your needs in any way that we can. We offer many affordable funeral services. Please feel free to call us with any questions you may have or visit us at www.landoffyfuneralhome.com. Rizzo Family Chiropractic Center in Gibstown offers pain relief with a difference. Using specific chiropractic adjustments, Rizzo Family Chiropractic will get to the root of your problem quickly. Bring your headaches, neck, back, joint, or limb pain to Dr. Karen Rizzo. If you have recurring pain, chiropractic can help. Rizzo Family Chiropractic can relieve many sources of pain without extended treatment and ongoing therapy. Give your family the gift of caring professional pain relief with a difference. Rizzo Family Chiropractic. And welcome back now. It's time for the really the only reason that we do the show and you watch the show. It's Community Notes with Irma Stevenson. And Beth, I told you we're going to have a new show. It just takes a while. But Irma, before we start, Mark Camp is here with a quick walk on. Mark, come on in. Stay right there, Irma. Mark, uh, the announcement for this week? Okay. Uh, Paul's Per Day Committee is hosting their annual Chinese auction, which will be Saturday, April 25th at the Paul's Per Firehouse. Doors open at 5 uh, auction starts at six. Uh, Five dollar admission to get in. Additional cards are dollar piece. We will have refreshments for sale. This is our major fundraiser for Paul's birthday. So uh, we, uh, we've had a lot of support from uh, uh, business and industry in the area, and we'd like uh, people to show up and uh, uh, see what we have and spend some money and uh, help support Paul's birthday. It's also a nice social evening. Yeah. Yes, it is. Good friendly evening. Okay. Excellent, Mark. Well done. Okay. See that. It wasn't long at all. It did very well. Thank you, Mark. And if you know, if you enjoy those sort of things, that's a fun night. Irma? Well, we have a lot of birthdays today. Jap Gentile said, Irma, you never announced my birthday. So this is belated to Anthony Jap Gentile, who was born on March the 4th. I won't say what year. Happy birthday, Jap. Where did Jap come from? Not Jap personally, because his mother was my aunt. But I mean, yeah, no, he came from that way. But where did Jap come from? 
I didn't ask him. It's like Dripsy. Dripsy Nordoff's not telling us till he dies. So what can I tell you? It's a very, very complicated, complicated family. It's Paulsburg. You know our nicknames. Happy birthday also to Rita Costenbader, Bryn Costenbader, our wonderful friend, Coach Bob Frederick, Eddie Ravely, Patty Farrow, Jimmy Mature, Debbie uh, Franklin Mincy, Gail DeMarco, Cindy Emmerich, Michael Funk Sr., Chris O'Leary, Grace Martin, Donald Oak Sr., Cheryl Monahan Jenipro, David Ross, Joan Conway, Alicia Elam, uh, Abigail Jane Luan, who's my little granddaughter and is my clone. She's five years old today. Mike Mogar, Teresa Burke, Helen Chivaroli, uh, my granddaughter from Boston, Stephanie Stevenson Hamilton, um, Betty Soloff, who was always there at Lincoln Auto. Remember Lincoln Auto, John? Oh, yes. uh, Teresa Burke and George Dripsy Nordoff Delance, and Delance Braxton and Danielle Relations. Happy anniversary to April and Ray Ziger, John and um, Ann Williams, Eldora and George Wright, Nancy and Mark Gaunt, Kay and Pete Ruggi, and Teresa and Joe Burke. Happy anniversaries and happy uh, birthdays, John. A lot of people. Good luck. John, there's going to be a craft vendor fair to benefit the Richard Struss Jr. Double Lung Transplant Fund. His dad, of course, was uh, Rick Struss and his mom, Sally. 35 crafters and vendors to choose from on Sunday, April the 26th from 10A to 3P, Independent Oil Workers Union. 50-50 raffles and basket auction. Come out and support a great cause. And this is Paul's for People helping Paul's for People. And they're going to have a 31 bag bingo also for Richard Struss Jr. Double Lung Transplant Fund. He needs double lungs, John. That's going to be over in Mantua. That'll at the be Mantua, Saturday, May 16th at the Mantua VFW, 1P to 4P. Call Sally at 856-803-6192 or you can go on her, her website, Suzanne, D-E-F-S-M-S at AOL.com. John, this is polls for people. We need to help our people. Okay, you're oh, okay. And uh, Mark and I, we had fun. Last Friday night, we were at the AMP Artists, Musicians, Poets, and Dancers at Paulsburg High School. Uh, William Gaines Memorial Art Gallery, um, and our jazz band was great. We had poems, um, different vendors, um, food merchants from around our area. Uh, we got to sample their food. Our jazz band was terrific. The poets were great. It was a fun time at Paul's. That's Friday. Lynette Milanese and her And Lynette, Lynette Milanese, and she's fighting. She's having a battle, John, with cancer myeloma. Uh, she's upbeat about it. She was there, and we just had a great time. It was Paul's High School helping. Yeah, and, she, and that, that's just that's another example of, you know, the arts play an important role, and uh, those things need to be supported. John, they do. And uh, last Friday, I was lucky enough to go with our art class, Mrs. Ledoux and Christine O'Malley, to Philadelphia Museum of Art. It was just wonderful. Our kids were great. In fact, Nico Simon and I wanted me to jump on his back and go up the steps and be a Rocky. I told him no thanks. So our kids are... That's an interesting visual. (laughs) Oh, great guy. Great guy. And um, we have a lot going on. Let me see. The second Tuesday and the third Tuesday of May will be our uh, junior high and senior high concert at 7 o'clock. There's just so much going on. And I just love it. Busy time of the year. Also, on a very sad note, uh, I, don't, I don't traditionally, we have not traditionally eul- done eulogies for people, but uh, this is a special, special moment. Uh, Jack Bird passed away. For those watching who haven't heard or don't know, uh, he was 74. Uh, he, he, uh, he left with his family surrounding him, uh, very much loved. And I can tell you there is a great void, and he will be missed, and not only a personal friend, but uh, Jack, wherever he went, was at home. He was a citizen of the world, and uh, his friends were in many quarters. And in many walks of life, he embraced and greeted President Obama and would take time to talk to a person on the street. Uh, He will be missed. As we close the show out, uh, Mark Camp shot some still photographs of the Little League Parade as it opened its season, getting probably close to a 60-year anniversary if it hasn't hit it already. This year's Grand Marshal was Phil Weiss of Weiss's True Value, a longtime friend and sponsor of the show. Well-deserved for Phil and a nice moment. So we'll go out to credits with uh, the photographs that Mark shot as the Paulsburg Little League opens its season and dreams of big league and Williamsport, Pennsylvania abound. And we leave on a happy note, Irma. God bless America and go big red. And Jackie, we know where you are. And no, Jack, you talk more than I did. I'm going to tell Jack Bird stories for a very long time. Uh, that's going to do it. Until next time.